What's going on everybody? I'm Brandon from Walker's Woodworks. Welcome back to the channel. On today's video, I'm gonna show you how I install C-Channel in a tabletop. Let's go. So I get asked about this quite a bit and that's how do I install C-Channel in a top and why do you do it? The reason I do it is because I don't use breadboard ends. I personally don't like that style or build in that style. I like the clean panel look of the top. So I use C-Channel and I inset them on the bottom side. I use inserts elongated holes to allow for wood movement. And uh, so far it's worked out really well. I know a lot of people that do it. Some people say it's not needed. I just like that extra little bit of insurance and the time it takes is not really that much off my schedule. So it's worth it to me. I'm gonna take you guys through and show you how I do it. There's a few things we need to do first, uh, clean and prep the metal, and then we can get to get them inlaid in the top. The first thing I do with any metal that I use on a project is clean it with acetone. This removes all the dirt and oils that the metal is going to have on it when you get it from the metal yard. Make sure to wipe it down several times with a rag until it comes off clean. Once they're all dry and clean, you can add a protective layer. I just use clear enamel. You could also use spray paint, but I do like to use something that helps prevent the rust. Note that the channel does have elongated holes in it to allow for wood movement. I usually put on about four coats of this. After they're all dry and cured, I make sure my top is upside down and then I set the channels on there and measure out where I want them to go. I typically put them in from the ends about 12 inches. Once I get them where I want them, I just mark the edges with a pencil. On tops larger than six feet, I do like to put another one in the center so I have three overall. I use two different types of bits to inlay the channel. The first one is a quarter inch spiral upcut bit from Bits and Bits Company. I will link this bit as well as everything else I use in the video description below for you guys, but I will also add the coupon code you guys can use to get 15% off of your order on the Bits and Bits website. They're awesome. I use a track for my track saw for this, but you can really use any straight edge. Basically, I just set the track up so the edge of the router bit just covers my pencil line and cuts to the inside of the lines. This will allow room for the channel to slide down into the top with some room to spare. Make sure you also clamp down the straight edge. On the first pass, I only go about a quarter inch down into the top making sure to hold the router tight against the straight edge. I go about a bit size past the end of the lines to give the channel a little bit of room. I then measure the channel from the bottom of the leg to the very top, and then I set a stop on my router to cut just a hair deeper so you don't bottom out the legs of the channel in the top. Then I set the straight edge up to cut the other line and repeat the process. Now 
To take out the center section of material, I use this beast of a bit. It's actually a surfacing bit that I use to flatten slabs with, but it takes the least amount of time in this application. You don't have to use this bit, but it does work great for this. Another option would be something like a three quarter inch end mill bit. Basically it's the same process for this. Measure the thickness of the channel at the very top, set a stop on the router, and then take out the material. Once the bulk of the material was removed, I fine-tuned the ends with a mallet and a chisel. Don't make fun of my chisel skills. I hardly use hand tools. After I'm happy with the fitment, I mark out the holes with a pencil. Then I use a center punch to have a starting point for the drill bit. Using the insert as a depth gauge, I put painter's tape on the bit as a flag so I would know how deep to drill. I like using Forstner bits for this because they leave a lot better finish and don't walk when starting the hole. The bit size for these inserts is 3 8 I drill just a little bit deeper than the flag to ensure that the insert doesn't bottom out. Once the hole is drilled, I apply some CA glue on the insert to ensure that it's locked in place once installed. Don't spill it everywhere like I do. This is just like tapping a hole in metal. As I screw in the insert, I go slow and do several back and forth twists as I go to keep from tearing out the wood. The inserts I use are from Rampa. They are built really well, they don't break. People ask me all the time which ones I use. I will leave the info for these in the description below. I just use a small sanding block to clean up all the sharp edges. These are the corresponding screws for the inserts. These are the flathead ones. I like them a lot better than the button heads. It's just a lot more low profile screw. I'll leave the info for those in the description also. I like to start in the middle and work my way out. It might not matter but I feel like it always lays the channel down a little bit more evenly. 
Also, don't over tighten these bolts. The wood will expand and contract moving these bolts in the slot. Make them snug, but don't wrench them down like the hole. Well, that pretty much wraps up the dry fit. Basically, you just gotta take it back out, finish your top as normal, reattach it, and then you can put your top on the base. I hope this answered any questions you guys have. If you do have any more questions, make sure to leave me a comment below. Hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, obviously. I'm gonna move on to doing these down here, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.